Okay, so we're just starting to put everything back together again. We've got the exhaust manifold on there. It's looking pretty good. It's looking a lot better than it was. Uh, just remember, with uh, these bolts are copper. They're not magnetic, so if you drop them, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. And uh, remember, there are torque bolt settings for these. And you might want to not only do them up with the correct torque setting, but you want to do them up uh, in diagonal order. So you want to do a bolt over here, then a bolt over there, and so forth, back across, back across. You don't want to do up all one side and then all the other side because uh, there's uh, eight bolts in total, I think. So uh, just remember to respect that. And like I said before, the exhaust manifold gasket is probably the most important one for this whole job. So replace that one. And also you can do the turbo gasket here. Um, don't, don't forget to reconnect your EGR connection line. And you can also replace, uh, there's two gaskets back there. There's one here. And as you look around the corner there at the back of the engine, there's another gasket. So. Okay, so once you've got the exhaust manifold back on and the uh, other small respective parts, uh, it's basically just the same job again to put the turbocharger back in the car. Uh, it's, it's nothing special to put it back in. You've just got to work slowly, be careful. It will fit in there. Just be patient and you, you can wriggle it into place. Um, I've just got a picture of the gasket here because remember that's, that's probably one of the important ones that you need to renew. Uh, just make sure that you get the holes lined up correctly and um, in the whole project if there is three bolts that you should replace it's these ones and these are the three bolts that secure the turbocharger to the uh, to the exhaust manifold and I'll just quickly show you here uh, so you can see in here this, this is where the turbocharger goes to these are the three bolts and that goes in there uh, you can see that, that that's the turbocharger, that, that's where it fits into the exhaust section to the DPF and you can see it's not actually a gasket, it's a lead ring, it's made from lead and it will squish in there. I'll quickly show, show that to you. And you can see there it is there. So you can actually buy this from Mercedes, it's, just a, it's, a, it's a piece of lead and it, it acts as a gasket. So again, that's probably another critical one. Uh, if, if yours is worn down, make, make sure you get a good seal in the turbocharger section. So uh, I'll just go and put everything back together again now. And with, with these bolts also, just remember there is a torque setting for these bolts. So you've just got to respect that too. Uh, this is just another quick uh, bit of information for you guys too. These are the oil return lines and you can see that I've put two brand new gaskets on them for the oil return lines. Make sure these gaskets are on as snug as possible. They're on, make sure they clip, they clip into place and even use a pair of pliers to squash them into place. Because what happens is you're going to put the turbocharger on top and uh, bolt it into place here and here but then the oil return lines will need to mate up to the bottom of the turbocharger. And to be honest, it's probably, it's probably the second hardest thing to do in this entire project, um, or if not one of the hardest things, because these lines move all over the place and you've got to, you've got to line up just two, two little bolts and I know you've got, a, you've got a little bit of wiggle room, but once you get under the car um, and you see that, 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 that they move all over the place, it's a pain in the ass. You've really got to be patient and, and it can take it can take 15 minutes just to, just to do these two, which is a long time for four bolts. 
takes a, takes a lot a lot of patience and you've got to be very careful lining it up exactly um, so I just thought I'd give you a warning make sure these these gaskets are on perfect because once you've got the entire weight of the turbocharger which is like 10 or 15 kilograms it can squash the gaskets and, and, and just push them out of place so make sure they're on there really tight now this is the part that I was talking about in the uh, previous previously uh, these are the oil return lines that go back to the turbocharger so you can see here that they're attached to the engine block and that there's a gasket there that part's pretty easy but getting these two back onto the turbocharger it's quite difficult so you're gonna have to play around with it a little bit um, whether you want to take this part off the engine block and do these ones up first or do these ones first and put them back on the uh, next it's really up to you um, it is very fidgety and it does take a bit of time to get it all worked out so um, it's just got to be something you're gonna have to play around with um, it's difficult because you're underneath the car but um, once you get this out of the way you sort of you're on the home stretch uh, we've got to put the rear turbocharger bracket back on again there's sort of no easy way of doing this so I've got the bracket here and I'm just showing you the two bolts the best way to do this I found is to put uh, the bottom bolt in first uh, finger tightness and then the top bolt finger tightness and then uh, go back with your socket wrench and retighten everything um, I've just just under you can see where I've got the yellow circle mark it's it's up up in there it's a tight spot it's right underneath the car here you can see um, I've done the oil return lines and there's the turbocharger um, so you've got to get up under there uh, put the bracket in there finger tightness first where the yellow circle is um, and obviously there's the top there's the other bolt that has to go up I can't even get the camera up there but hopefully it will all fall into place all those difficult parts out of the way uh, we've just got to put the alternator back uh, the front turbo bracket and the alternator bracket uh, we've got a we've got only got a few bolts left and things like that so I'm just going to fly through it um, basically re refitting is the reversal of removal there's nothing there's mu nothing much to talk about here so I'm just going to fly through it and put everything back on um, and retension the belt replace the belt to the alternator uh, retention the belt and uh, then we can put the air duct back on and everything else so so to some people are wondering how this clip goes on uh, I'll just quickly show you the clip just goes on first like this that's it and then the next part is this plastic it just clips in as a retainer on each side like that and that's it, it's meant to be easy and it's good to go. That will clip in like that uh, onto the, the coupling and that's pretty much it. It, it should seal because it's got an O-ring there. Um, just to make sure, I do do some uh, tape around here, some duct tape or if you've got some uh, some kind of speed tape, you can clamp that on, but th that's pretty much it. That's how, that's how it clamps on. It's just meant to be a fast, fast connection and um, it's not perfect. But um, that's how they did it from factory. So once you're done under the car fitting the alternator and um, the turbocharger brackets uh, and the intercooler pipe, you're basically you're basically done with underneath the car. So congratulations, good job. And next up, uh, we've just got the few few more simple things to do: uh, the air cleaner, the engine cover, and uh, the turbocharger pipe. Uh, remember, this this is the snout of the turbocharger. Make sure the gasket in here, that, that there's a double gasket here, you can see that. Make sure it's in good condition, make sure it has a good seal. Uh, make sure the hose clamp is in good condition. I might, uh, my, I might change mine and get a, get a bigger one or something like that to get a better clamp on the snout of the turbocharger. But yeah, it's basically just putting all these pieces back, uh, nothing special. So basically everything's been put, a, put back together on the car now. And uh, you're asking me, okay, now that, now that you put it back together, is it going to be easy to start? Because you basically, you've flooded the engine, you've sprayed, you've sprayed this straight into the combustion chamber of the engine. Um, and the, the answer is, it's actually quite difficult to start. It'll take a few attempts. 
um, it'll blow heaps of crap out the exhaust the car's gonna shake all over the place um, because this product it says to, to spray the product into the engine why it's running at about 2,000 rpm uh, just around in here somewhere so um, what I've done I've just sprayed it into the straight into the combustion chamber through the exhaust side and um, I've let it soak uh, in for, for the whole time why I've uh, why I put the car back together so um, it's gonna blow heaps of stuff out the exhaust uh, it's gonna be rattly but um, after after a good 30 minutes or an hour of driving it sounds beautiful it blows it blows all the um, soot out of the engine and it's really good so um, so here, here we go Okay, so I lied, it started first time. 